The word church is mentioned 77 times in the scriptures, 77 times in the King James Version. And all of them are mentioned, or all of the times that it is mentioned, it is in the New Testament. We understand that church is a part of our normal vocabulary. But if you go back and study that word, it is not just an ordinary word. It comes from a word called ecclesia. As a matter of fact, many years ago, me and my buddy right there, we made a, he made a program, and I was just helping him sell it, a church program called ecclesia. You know what that word means? Called out ones. Everybody say called out ones. I want to talk a little bit about the church today, and I'll, I'll tell you why as I proceed on this Sunday morning. The church was God's idea. As a matter of fact, the church was God's idea before creation. How do I know that? Because the Bible tells us that in the scriptures that he was slain from the foundation of the world. We understand that there was no Calvary before creation. We understand that there was no fleshly manifestation of God in the form of Jesus Christ before creation. But the Bible talks about in Romans 4, 17, God, God speaking of those things that were not as though they were. And then when you read in the book of Peter, you will find that the scripture says that Jesus was slain from the, or the Lamb of God was slain from the foundation of the world. We know that he wasn't slain then, but in the mind of God, he looked forward into 4,000 years of time, and he saw what would happen in the crucifixion. And from that, I gather that it has been in the plan of God all alone for there to be a church. This church is God's design. The church is God's idea. The church is the apex of all God is. He came to the New Testament, and this is what he said in the book of Matthew chapter 16. He said, Thou art Peter, and upon this rock, it hasn't been built yet, because he said, I will, that's future tense. He said, I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. This is where we find that Jesus said that I'm going to have a church and I am going to build it. I read a scripture somewhere that said, except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. We understand that I'm not the author of the church and you're not the author of the church, but Jesus is the author of the church. Somebody shout amen. He is the author of of the church. As a matter of fact, he is not only the author of the church, he is the author and the finisher of our faith. And I believe that today. So my subject today is simply this, being that it is Thanksgiving week. Thank God for the church. That's what I want to talk about. Thank God for the church. Is there anybody glad for the church today? Anybody glad? I, I got to talk a little bit about this. It's been on me. It's been heavy on me. First of all, God's still the head of the church. The church don't belong to me. When we say my church, we're talking about God's church. We're just a part of it. I'm not the quarterback. I don't call the plays. I'm an under shepherd, and he is the chief shepherd. He is the author of everything about this church. Ephesians chapter 5, Paul was talking to the church, and he said, husband is the head of the wife. We believe that. Even as Christ is the head of the church. He went on to say in the next verse, therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ. And he went the next verse, and he said, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Here's what you got to know about the church. Since it's God's design, 
since it's God's idea, since he said nothing is going to stop my church, even the gates of hell cannot prevail against my church. He still got it in his hands. He still got it designed. He started it at his own will. He has a purpose for his church. And I am here today to tell you the church is still a work in progress in the hands of God. Oh, this may not light your fire, but before it's over with, you, you, you're going to hear what I got to say today about the church. You see, God owns the church. The Bible said, for as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation read, received by traditions from your father but the precious blood of Christ as of the lamb without spot or without blemish and without spot he didn't buy us with gold or silver he said who fair verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world but was manifest in these last times for you so here's the process God saw as he always has the beginning the end from the beginning. He saw what was to be. He made mankind. He saw mankind fail. He knew that sin would come. In his mind, he knew there had to be an answer. And so that's why he was slain from the foundation of the world. It was God's plan and God's design. He moved us from law into grace and he created a thing called the church. Brothers and sisters, not a building and, and not not a church. Somebody say, not a church. The church. <laughs> There's a difference in a church because there's churches on every corner. If you want to talk about buildings, there's plenty of them right here in, in our Twin Cities and in our parish. There's all kind of places where people gather. But I want to talk about the church today because some folks claim to be the church that are not the church. I'm not going to give you my word today. I'm going to give you the word of God today. If he built it, he has a right to say who's going to be a part of it. You can, I'm going to preach a little bit today. I may run more of you off than I say. But here's the bottom line. You can't sign a church card and get in the church. You can't just go through a little emotional experience and get in the church. The Bible said that except a man be born again of the water and of the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Ladies and gentlemen, the church is the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'd love to shake your hand today and tell you, say this little prayer and you're saved. But that don't work. You'll be just as lost when you walk out of here as you were before you shook my hand. I don't have any power in these hands. I don't have a card for you to sign that say I'm now a member of Christian Life Church and that's all it's going to take for me. When you leave here, you'll feel so empty and you'll feel so lost. But I'll tell you what we can do. The word of the Lord is truth. And when we find us an altar and we repent of our sins and God baptizes us with his spirit, we know there's a change in our life. I want to tell you what God can do. He can turn it around and he can fix it in your life and he can put you in the body of Christ and he can make you a part of his bride because you follow the word of the Lord. See, here's the head. This is the body. But let me tell you about what happens in, in me. Now, it may not be that way with you. A while ago, you probably saw me sit down, but the, the leg was hurting in the part of the body. So I just sat down and gave my little leg a rest. But the body sends waves to the brain and, and to the head. But guess what? The head sends signals to the body. And the body and the head have to work together. We are the body of Christ and he is the head. Amen? We don't need what everybody else says. We need what the head says. We don't need to hear what the world is saying. We need to know what the head says. And the head wrote it all down and presented it in this book right here. And this is how we get from here to glory because the head is guiding the body. 
the hand can't say to the foot, I have no need of you. I wish some of y'all would help me preach. Thank you, Brother Hodge, for helping me today. Some of you looking at me like a mule looking at a new gate. But let me just tell you today, there are some things you need to know about the body of Christ. The body of Christ has to be attached to the head. The head will send the signals. The head, the brain waves of the head will send what the hand ought to do and what the foot ought to do. Let me tell you, if this brain wasn't functioning, I couldn't walk across this platform today. If the brain wasn't telling me what to do, I couldn't say a word up here today. Your brain, your head is the head of your body but let me tell you also that the body has to be connected to the head for something to happen I got to lay in this morning about 2 o'clock in the morning thinking about this and I thought God I've never seen it just this way but if we're not connected to you if we're not feeling the waves from you if we're not feeling the brain waves coming from you then we're not doing what we ought to be doing that's why you gotta find an altar of prayer that's why you got to visit a prayer room. That's why you got to push the plate back. You got to hear what the head has to say. Anybody with me today? Got any married guys in here? Well, you got anybody who wants to be married in here? Now, now, why did some of you guys that are married put your hands down? You are married and you want to be married. Isn't that right? Let me tell you what else the church is. It's not just the body, it's the bride. He calls us the bride of Christ. The bride. Let me tell you something. You won't get me riled up. I'll fight you over that girl right there. I've been with her almost 52 years. And let me just tell you, she's still my bride. I'll fight you over that. Somebody said, well, preacher, you shouldn't fight. Well, don't mess with my bride. Amen. And if you won't fight over yours, you ain't in love like you want to be. You need me to renew your vows for, for dust before dust this evening. Because the bridegroom loves the bride. And we are called the bride of Christ. We are the apple of his eye. We are the children of the most high God. We are in his heritage. We have a great heritage that's coming from God because we are his. We're not just his body. We're not just attached to him. We're his bride. And he glories in his bride. That's what one day he's going to say, come up, my love, my dove, my fair one, because he's going to call his bride to join him. And the Bible said he's going to give himself. He's going to present the church unto himself. Come on now. And the Bible said it's going to be without blemish and without spot because he wants a spotless bride. If you're in the bride of Christ, I might get in trouble here. I got to be real careful but I'm not really caring about getting in trouble. Listen to me right now. If you are in the bride of Christ, you can't be flirting with other gods. You can't be messing around with some false deity. He is, I read it in the book, he said, I am a jealous God. Before me there is no other there is none beside me. There is none above me. I am a jealous God. I'm here to tell you right now that if you're the apple of God's eye and you're the bride of Christ as the church, then you ought to act like the bride of Christ and I ought to act like the bride of Christ and we ought to give God our attention and give God our very best and because we are his church. See, I got to preach a little bit today about God's idea of what he began. And, and the only thing that I know is that the only way you can find out God's idea of the church is you have to go see how it began. Now, probably 96, 98% of church world believes that the church began in chapter 2 of, of the book of Acts. How many of you believe that? When the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were in wall in one place with one accord, 
There appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire set up on each of them. The Bible goes on to tell us what happened on that beautiful day of Pentecost. That was the birthday of the church. Theologians will tell you that. Bible scholars will tell you that. That was how the church was born. Why in the name of God? This is God's idea. God sent a rushing mighty wind. People were speaking with other tongues. People were moved by the power of God insomuch that they came off the street and said, what meaneth this? What's going on here? How is this happening? And Peter standing up with the 11, they said, we're hearing every man speak in our own language. What's going on? And Peter standing up with the 11 said, these are not drunken as you suppose. They hadn't had a drink. It's nine o'clock in the morning. He said, it's the third hour of the day. That's nine o'clock in the morning and he said but this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel in the last days saith God I am going to pour out my spirit upon all flesh (coughs) I got a couple of questions for you why do we think God's idea of the church began in Acts chapter 2 with such fire and anointing. And yet in 2023, we want a little quiet, laid back, don't get excited, don't let nothing mess with my beautiful integrity. I don't have time to mess my hair up if you got any. I don't have time to mess my new dress up. These shoes hurt my feet so I'm not going to be able to shout. Kick them off. I'm telling you right now what began with a blaze of fire and anointing ought to still be a blaze of fire and anointing. There ought to still be power in the church. There still ought to be glory in the church. It shouldn't be a die. I don't want a dead church because it didn't Start dead and God never intended for it to be dead. How? Now, I'm just going to preach God's design. God's design is for the church to worship. God's design, go read the book of Acts. The book of Acts is where the church began. 120 got it. 3,000 got it. 5,000 got it. And history said 87,000 were in the first church before the first persecution. 87,000. And the Bible tells us that that revival spread. Matter of fact, those at Thessalonica said, be careful because these are they which turn the world upside down. Miracles, signs, and wonders. The deaf were healed. The lame started walking. People got up that had walked around in years. Devils were cast out. That's the way the church began in the book of Acts. Why in the 21st century have we come to the place where we care more about what man cares about than what God cares about? If you're here for me to impress you today, honey, you better go somewhere else. This is not an entertainment. I come to tell you on this Sunday morning, thank God for the church because the church is where I can find my healing. The church is where I can find salvation. The church is where I can find an answer. The church is what happened to me a long time ago and it's been the best thing that ever happened in my life. I know I'm a fanatic. And I know I'm getting old, but I ain't changing. If you want me to change, you are, you, you, you better go to Dairy Queen and get you a Sunday because that ain't happening. Here's what I'm going to tell you. If the church is dead and dry, look, I love what happened here today. I, I love you, worshipers. I love you. Thank you for leading us to the, to the foot of the cross. Beautiful singing, great talent. But let me tell you, this is not an entertainment. This is not a show out of Branson. This is a God-given move of the Spirit of God. That's why when the Lord starts moving in the church, there ought to be tears running down people's eyes. There ought to be somebody dancing in the Holy Ghost. There ought to be somebody that stands up and raises their hands and receives their healing. I believe that's what God wants out of the church. The church is the greatest thing that can happen to you, but you got to let it happen in your life.
want you to say something with me. You ready? I want you to repeat after me. No matter how I feel, no matter what's been going on, I feel better when I worship. Does anybody agree with that? If I can just get to the house of God, David said my foot had well near slipped. I got to looking around and all the wicked people were being blessed. <laughs> but when I got to the house of the Lord, woo, hallelujah. I want to tell you what the church is about. It'll pick you up today if you're down. It'll heal you a cancer. It'll heal you a diabetes. It'll take away your heart trouble. The church has a miracle for you this morning. Woo. You walk out of here singing, I feel better, so much better when I lay my, my burdens down. Denise, where you at? Denise, where you at? I saw her come down this aisle a few weeks ago. And you know what she did? She laid her burdens down. I, she came through the front door today. I said, Denise, I'm so proud of you because she's been away from this church for a long time. But God brought her right back. Lay your burdens right here and don't you pick them back up again because the church that I'm talking about, the church I'm talking about, is where you can get victory over the, the things that have had you bound. Hallelujah. Is there anybody in the house today that can say thank God for the church? Oh, pastor, you think you're the only one saved. No, 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 no. Here's what I want to tell you. Y'all going to love me. I'm, I'm, I'm old enough now I can preach what I want to, and it don't matter what you say. I've been that old since baby, probably about 21. Listen to this. I don't care what tag you walked in here with us today. I don't care what you call yourself. You can be Pentecostal. You can be Assembly of God. You can be Presbyterian. You can be Catholic. I don't care what you call yourself. There ain't a name nowhere in the Bible that says this is what you got to call the church. Now, we, gra we grab some names. We grab Pentecost because it was on the day of Pentecost that the Holy Ghost fell. But I read where the churches of God salute you. I read about the church of Christ in the Bible. There's all kind of names. I don't care what you name yourself. I don't care what you call yourself. That's not even important to God. The only thing about that is it may identify you with somebody that don't believe fat meets greasy and ever had a move with the Holy Ghost in their life. I don't care what you call yourself. Don't quit now. I need help now. I'm bogged down. Listen to me. It's not about what you call yourself. It's about what you do with what you know. It's about what kind of experience you got with God. I'm not here to hang a name on you. You can hang ten house on the front of this church and there may not be a chicken in here. Just because you say you're religious don't mean you're religious. Just because you say you, you got it don't mean you got it. And I'll tell you what Jesus said. Don't tell me you love me. Show me. Don't tell me about your gospel. Show me. Don't tell me about what you got. Show me. Show me by how you get up on Monday morning. I feel Holy Ghost in the house today. Tell me. Tell me all you want to. But when you walk out Wednesday and when you walk out Thursday and when you walk out Saturday, Saturday morning, I want to know what you got because it's not what you call yourself, it's what you are. And that don't go over good in some places, I can tell you that right now, but thank God you understand because we got a lot of folks back, back in the 90s, this church, and, and, and it had been forever, was the First United Pentecostal Church of Monroe. First United Pentecostal Church. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. I went to a church growth seminar by Wynn Arn back in the 90s in the big crowd there. And I listened to statistics. And you know what it said? Mainline denominations in America, including us, were declining. 
because people don't want mainline denominations. They don't want, you know, if you're, I'm just being honest. You're riding down the road. You see Pentecostal on a sign. You know what that is. You see Baptist on a sign. You know what that is. You see Catholic on a sign. You know what that is. So I made a proposition. I talked to my dad. He was in for that. I said, Dad, I think we ought to change the name of the church. Now, you would have thought that I had murdered the, the Pope with some people. You'd have thought it was, a, it was the most ungodly and deadliest sin that I had ever committed because I wanted to change the name of the church. I remember getting committees together and talking, and we took suggestions. We had every kind of name you could ever imagine. Liver of, river of Life, Running Water, Holy Baptism Church. You know, I mean, it, you could hang anything on here. But we came finally to Christian Life Church, and I remember we put out a, a brochure in our drama, and it said, we haven't changed what we believe but we have changed our name we're not changing what we and let me tell you why that was because when they see Christian Life Church they don't know who we are we had 330 something first time visitors that next month when we changed the name and put it out front 330 something first time visitors we got people that walk in here all the time they don't know who we are we're not trying to hide our identity I'll tell you right now I'm what God Jesus name tongue talking Pentecostal from the top of my head to the sole of my feet but I gotta reach my generation and if I can get them in here that God can heal their body that God can change their mind that God can fix their, their brokenness. I'm here to tell you that's what church ought to be about. Get rid of your pride today. There's an idea that God has about the church. When you elected me pastor of this church to be co-pastor with my father in 1989, June the 1st, I walked in here the next Sunday and this is what I preached. The book with no amen. Does anybody know what book that is? Huh? Acts. The book with no amen. You know what amen means? Amen means so be it. It's over. It's done. Go read the rest of the books in the New Testament. At the end of the books, it'll say amen. It'll say amen. You know why God didn't say amen in the book of Acts? Because he wanted the book of Acts to continue in 2023. He wants the book of Acts to continue in this church. He didn't start it one way and want to end it in another. I'm preaching to you today. Thank God for the church. Thank God for people that believe in prayer. Thank God for people that believe in loving. Thank God for people who are reaching for the lost. Now, I'm going to tell you, we're not everything God wants us to be yet. But I refuse to fall into the mold of what the 21st century calls a church. I'm looking around, see what I can use for a prop. I ain't good as you, I didn't bring mine. If I saw it though, it's good. It's so. know where I'm going, don't you? You can hear a mouse run across the... Now today we're going to turn to the book of Mark. I heard one preacher say not long ago, he got a little excited he hadn't been excited in a while, I guess. He said to his child, I'm sorry I yelled at you. You can hear. I'm not sorry I yelled at you this morning. I can't sit here and be a 21st century feel good. I'm not against stools. If you want to teach on a Wednesday night, matter of fact, I may have to go this if I have to keep preaching because my leg hurts me so bad when I stand up a long time. It feels pretty good, to be honest with you. Dead, dry, boring. I used to have a bird dog. If he ran by some of these churches, he'd point. Why? Because that's not what. Look, don't you fall into that realm. 
let me tell you, you want to get God doing something, you start giving him old-fashioned worship. You start giving him old-fashioned praise. You start preaching in the Holy Ghost. Don't give me a little canned sermon that you got off the Internet. Don't give me a little something. Look, I, I use other folks' stuff. I ain't going to lie to you. I've used a lot of things. But let me tell you, I never walk out of here without praying. I never walk out of here without asking God. I ask him sitting right here a minute before I walk to here, God, whatever you do, you let me be your mouthpiece this morning. You let me get these people stirred to the place that we don't want to just have a quote-unquote church, but we want to be a part of the church. We want to be a part of what God's doing. We want to be a part of apostolic revival. We want people's lives changed. We want people to feel healed and, and touched and moved in the Holy Ghost. Oh God, don't let it go away, but keep it alive in me. Ha! I still believe in church. I still believe in the church. There's a lot, a lot of places they call a church. But the church is the bride of Christ. It's the, and it's not just us few, by the way. It's a big number of folks that's in the body of Christ. But I'll tell you who they are. They're not dead. They're not dry. They're not just a common man. They've been filled with his spirit. They've been baptized in water. They've been filled with the Holy Ghost. They know what worship is all about. Oh, God, don't let us air from that but let us be a part of the church in your precious name ha. hallelujah no, don't, go, don't get quiet on me now this is not a social club this is not the Kiwanis club or the Lions club you can't just join up here you got to come God's way. He said, I am the door. And if anybody comes any other way, he's a thief. You can't get in the church without Jesus. Somebody said, amen. He's the answer today. Jesus is the answer today. I'll tell you something else. I'm going to preach it a little bit. i got a few minutes left. i got to preach this a little bit. Some of you are going to get quiet. As a matter of fact, every one of you sit down right now because I, I, I don't want to embarrass anybody. But I'm going to preach this a little bit because I feel like it's important. You know what they did in the book of Acts? Because the church was so powerful in their life and the church was so mighty in their life. The Bible said they literally sold their possessions and they brought everything and laid it at the feet of the apostles. Now, I'm not advocating you go sell out today. That's not what I'm doing. I want to tell you something. How many of y'all love me? you didn't raise your hand, I want you to repent. You can't go to heaven without loving me. Would you love me if I told you the truth this morning? Okay, I'm about to tell you the truth today. If you love something, you invest in it. And I got scripture for that. Because the Bible said, lay not up for yourselves treasures in this world, where moth and dust doth corrupt and thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourself treasures in heaven where moth and rust cannot corrupt and thieves cannot break through and steal. And then the next scripture said this, for where a man's treasure is, there will his heart be also. The church, if you love the church, you got to invest in it. you got to give it your very best. you got to give your time to it. you got to give your emotions to it. you got to give your talent to it. We were having a discussion a few nights ago, and uh, Jeff said to me, he said, well, there just never was an issue in my day when I was growing up. We, we, we knew not to plan anything on a Wednesday or Sunday because that was church. You raised that way? Yeah. Sister Judy, thank you for raising him that way, and I obviously it's still that way. Where a man's treasure is. I don't preach this way very often. And I may ruin this whole sermon today, but so be it. I'm going to say what I feel like I need to say. If everyone in this church invested in the kingdom of God, 
like the Bible says, there is no telling what this church could do. When you make $40,000 a year and you give God three hundred, dollars that's not what God is pleased with. You need to go read the book of Malachi chapter 3. Will a man rob God? Let me tell you, I'd rather rob Chase Bank than I had God. Because we're all, and I'm not pointing anybody out. That's why I said sit down and don't stand up for God's sake. Just listen. But if you can't put God first in your life, I'm not talking about just your money, in your life, then you are not in love with his church. Because let me tell you what the church is. The church is my life. The church is the best thing that ever happened to me. The promises of God are true. And the principles of God are true. He said, seek ye first, not second, not third, not somewhere down the line, not after you pay everybody else. He said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all of these things, everybody say things. Things, what things? Food, shelter, everyday needs in your life. All of these things will be added unto you. Wouldn't you hate? to come to a church on a Sunday morning and jump up and down and praise God and feel good like we're feeling right now. I've taken, I got a feeling I'm taking some of the feel good out of some of you right now. But would you hate to come feel real good and walk out of here and say, whoo, praise God, that man, whoo, I felt it in that church today. Wow, it was great. Hallelujah. I want more services like that. And the trumpet sound and you stand before God and you have to answer I read a story about two people in the Bible who's got guts enough to stand up and say preach it preacher I am I am it's 1131 I'm overtime that means I'm getting paid overtime hallelujah I don't get a dime more probably get less when this is over but listen to me I read a story in the Bible about in the first church, in the church, where a man and a woman, they had connived before they came in. And when when they came in, they both lied to the preacher because the preacher looked at Ananias and said, is that all? And he said, yeah, that's all. That's all I owe God. And, and you know what? He fell dead at the altar. He fell dead in the church. And they hauled him out feast first. And his wife came in and they said, is that all? She said, oh, yeah, that's all. That's all we owe God. And she fell dead and they had two burials that day because they lied to God. I'm just preaching to God. I took the shout out of some of you. But I'm here to tell you, if you are in love with the church, if you love God like you say you do, if you are in love with his kingdom, then your money and your time and your faithfulness and everything you've got ought to go to God first and then life will take care of itself. I can testify, God has never let me down. God has never, never, never one time went back on his word. You didn't say that, preacher, because you want our money. I don't get another dime no matter how much you pay. Did you hear what I said? I don't get another dime. It goes to his kingdom. But I can tell you this. He watches and he knows who gives and who loves and who has given of themselves. Now let's everybody in the house stand. I'm talking about God's church. Everybody say the church. Come on, say the church. The church. The church. Hallelujah. 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 I feel the Holy Ghost in the church today. I was at a, I was at a seminar and it, it, it wasn't of, of our faith. I'll tell you where it was. It was John Maxwell's seminar several years ago on leadership. And John Maxwell said, putting somebody, taking up the offering that don't pay tithes is like making Willie the robber the president of the bank. I 
I'm feeling good up in here today. See, you can smile if it don't hit you. You better smile if it hits you so nobody will know. But the facts are, it's his church. You see, God don't have to have your money. He's got everything he needs. He can make it without you, and he will make it without you. But let me tell you what, he, it's a test. One, you, you ain't going to like this, one out of every four verses in the Gospels talk about possessions and money because God knew it was going to be a test. You want me to tell you how to find out if you really are in love with God? Go home today and open your checkbook. If you got more money going over here and over there and over yonder and over here and you scratch your head and say, well, I don't believe God's going to get his this month. Let me tell you what. He's okay. He's just coming to help me preach at him. I don't believe God's, I believe God's not going to get his this month. Oh, I, I killed the whole sermon. But let me tell you, it needs to be preached in this church. Every once in a while, I take a look. And I don't do it often. But I just, and you know what? Here's what I find out. I find out most of the time, people that start griping and complaining, they aren't givers. People that want to cause trouble in the church, they're not givers. Woo! I know. I know. You're looking at your watch saying, boy, we need to get out of here. Pizza Hut's called waiting on us. Piccadilly, Catfish Charlie's. We got to get out of here. That preacher's killing us. I got you captive today. If you walk out on me now, everybody's going to know. I'm just playing with you. I'm doing it with a smile. You know why I'm doing it? Because I love you. And I don't want to see you go to hell over money. I don't want to see you go to hell. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you who you got to stand in the judgment day with. Come here. Come here. Sister Sadie, I know it's, it's hard. Come here. Come here. Come here, Sister Sadie. Come here. She don't like my beard. She'll, she'll. Come on, Sister Sadie. She said, you kill that deer? I said, I did. She said, go shave that beard. So I'm going to have to shave my beard. So Sadie said, I got to. You know, you know who you got to stand in judgment with? Sadie Norton, who's retired and lives on a fixed income, but never misses a tithing check to this church. Never. Never. Christine Lawson, I could have pulled you down here. I know you, I know you ladies. Or like me, you don't get around as well anymore. But you know what? I got to stand in judgment day with people like this right here. Because she loves the church. She called me last week. She said, how's my favorite pastor? I said, well, how's my favorite saint? I love you, Sadie Norton. But I don't just love you because you give. I love you because you sold out to the kingdom a long time ago. And because nothing has changed in your life. If the refrigerator goes out tomorrow, Sadie Norton's going to pay her tithes. If, if the not food on the, I'm telling you what I know, Sadie Norton's going to pay her tithes. Because these are the kind of people who fell in love with the church. I'm just asking you today, are you in love with the church? She helped me preach today. She's going to be expecting an offering. If you don't like me for this kind of preaching, then I'm sorry. But ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, I want to stand on Thanksgiving Sunday, and I want to tell you thank God for the church. The church has been my lifeline. The church has been my, it's been my help and my help. When I didn't know where else to go, I went to the church. My best friends are in the church. The people that I associate with are in the church. Everything I've ever had is in the church. I love the church of the living God. I love not just these people. I, I got friends that are in the church. I got people that will call me and encourage me because they're in the church. I've got pastor friends that talk to me all, all the time and encourage me because because I mean, look, I'll tell you what one pastor said not long ago. If there were no heaven and there were no hell, I'd still spend my life in the church because the church is my answer. 
The church has been good to me. The church has helped my children. The church has helped my grandchildren. The church has helped my marriage. The church has helped my finances. The church has helped my lifestyle. The church is the best thing that happened to me. And I want to thank God for the church. Put your hands up all over this room. And let's thank you for the church today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know it's late. I know I've preached over. I don't do that very often. But could could you could you do me a favor today? I just think it would show honor to God. It doesn't matter who you are, where you came from, if you're a first time visitor or been here 20,000 times, would you just join me as close as you can get around this front just for a moment today and I want to say thank you for your goodness thank you for your kindness thank you for your mercy thank you for your grace thank you for your love thank you that you loved me when I was unlovable thank you for the the great days of my life come on help me there's no place